what's up you two? How's it going? Quick back with you again. Great to see you guys. Okay, today uh, another brew day. Uh, big brew day. We're doing an all grain brew. Um, not sure what I'm going to call this recipe. I made it up using a bunch of grains that I had left over. Specialty grains and base grains. So I had some of it already pre-crushed so I wanted to use that up before it went stale. So um, I, I basically started naming this uh, Frick's uh, Dark Ale use up everything you've got, or uh, a buddy of mine actually said, why don't you call it a shepherd's pie brew, or jambalaya, or something like that. Just a, a big old mash of what we've got left. So, we're going to get going here. Um, I have got over here, I've got my big uh, boil pot going with my strike water, okay? So I'm just getting that strike water heated up. So, what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to do the full length all grain brew video, and then what I'll do is I'll come up with the categories of specific items that we want to basically focus on. So we'll focus on strike water, mashing in, the mash ton. Then we'll focus strictly on uh, getting up to boil. We'll focus on, you know, doing hop additions, uh, wort chilling, uh, getting it into your fermenter, and even maybe sanitizing. So what I want to do is quick little blurbs or, or quick little uh, excerpts of the specific things that you might want to uh, focus on learning or, or whatever the case may be. So we're going to give that a try, but this one, this video is going to be the full length uh, all grain brew. So we're getting things started. I've got a yeast starter going that I started yesterday. Um, I think I'll do another quick video on yeast starter too. Um, anyways, so I've got that going upstairs. It's got about uh, 1800 mils of water. And I added just about a cup of uh, medium dry malt extract to that. Um, and what I did was I boiled that for five minutes together and then allowed it to cool and added my yeast, uh, liquid yeast I had. So it's a Y Yeast Labs 1056, I think, uh, which is a, an ale yeast. So we're going to use that. It's going upstairs. All right, let's get things going, all right? I have to add, I'm trying out a new camera for this video. Um, a friend of mine allowed me to borrow this camera of his. So I'm going to give it a try and see what comes up, okay? I'm hoping to get better quality. This is an HD camera. So if I like it, then probably I'll pick up a camera like this myself. Um, what's going to be difficult for me is getting the different angles with this camera, but I'm going to do my best, okay guys? So I've pre-milled everything, all the grain in this recipe. It's sitting in a pail here. Okay, so there it is, all pre-milled up. There's about 15 and a half pounds of grain here. I'll put the grain bill down below. Okay guys, our mash water is just about up to temperature. We're sitting right now at 166. So what I would like to see is 168, 170 before I put it in the mash water ton here, okay? So I'm gonna set up the camera to do the view of uh, doughing in or mashing in, and uh, we'll get going there, okay? Okay, mash water's up to temperature. Strike water's up to temperature. Here we go, we're gonna pour that in the mash water ton. the lid closed and we'll let that heat up. Guys, an important part of the mash ton or the mash strike water is we want to pH stabilize it so we got some pH 5.2 here. I'm gonna put just shy of one tablespoon in there. Okay, there we go. Okay guys, so now we've had it sit for a while and we're sitting right at 168. So I'm going to let this sit for a few more minutes and get down to about uh, 167 I think and then we will dough in. Okay guys, we're all set. We're going to dough in here. Here's all the green. Here's my stir stick. 
Okay, so here we go. So you want to add this nice and slowly because you don't want to get any major clumps, okay? And you're going to stir it as you go. I don't know if you guys can see this. I hope you can. This has got to be my favorite part of all grain brewing because the smell that comes from doughing in or mashing in is just phenomenal. <clears throat> okay, we've got a couple of little clumps here, so we're just going to keep stirring those out. And the consistency of your mash is going to be quite thick or soupy, you know, kind of um, like a runny oatmeal. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of this grain in here. It's almost all gone. And in this batch, I'm shooting for about a 70 to 75 percent efficiency. So, I hope that comes through. There we go, guys. Get all the rest of that in there. Now we're going to get it stirred in here. Nice and good. You got to be careful not to hit that stainless steel braid. I've done it a couple of times and you kind of get dings in it. Okay, want to make sure we get all the grain soaked in water too, okay? There's a couple of little chunks that I want to get out. No dough balls, man, no dough balls. sure we kill all the dough balls. And we'll get a temperature reading here. Now we're shooting for a mash temperature about 152. Okay, 150 to 152. And right now we're sitting at, uh, well, 151, 152. Yeah, we're sitting right around the right temperature. So that's good. We are going to close this up and let it sit for 75 minutes. Okay. Here we go. Okay guys, 75 minutes is up. We are ready to do our sparge. The I have my boil kettle up here with the sparge water in it and I prop it up so I can do a gravity feed through the sparge arm. Okay? So we lost about one and a half, two degrees over the 75 minutes in the mash time. Uh, so we'll get set up here and take our first runnings and we'll do a Vorloff so that we get some clear wort running, okay? So we'll get all that set up and be back in one second. So what we do is we try to set the grain bed before we take any runnings. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly open up the valve here. And start taking a little bit of runnings. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the runnings. I'm going to take about two quarts of runnings. And then I'm going to wait for the runnings to actually run clear, okay? Because we're going to... We're going to set our grain bed so that the grain bed acts as a filter as well as the stainless steel braid, okay? And actually, it's not looking too bad there. So I'm just going to run two quarts of a runoff here and then we'll take our first runnings.
sky Green grass open door Have I dropped you for something more? Left you on the floor Sometimes I feel all alone No life from the Okay guys, so we're just basically going to take the runnings now. We've done the Vorloff. And we'll just open up the valve a little bit so we take just a little bit of runnings at a time. We don't want to crank that ball valve open because we don't want to have a mad rush of wart come through there. So we'll just take our time and nice and slowly run it out. Now, what we do with this two quarts is, take this out of here. I take my colander and what I do is I put a, just a little piece of tin foil on the bottom. So what I do is I pour it straight onto the tin foil and then it spreads it out over top, okay? So we're gonna pour that two quarts back in without disturbing the grain bed. Now once that's in there, we're gonna put our sparge arm in place and we'll start running the sparge water. There we go. Get rid of that. Keep this down here just in case. Get our sparge arm in place. Now right now we're sitting at exactly 168 is what we want. And we're going to open this ball valve just a little bit. Now what we're shooting for is we want to match the water running off of the sparge or into the sparge arm. Match it to the water or the warp coming out of the other end, okay? So this is my gravity feed system. Okay guys, so there it is, that's the sparge arm running. Okay, now this is my first attempt at a sparge arm and I think I've, you know, made some mistakes. So it doesn't exactly spread everything out. Um, but if you shake it around, you get a nice rainstorm. But what we're gonna do is, if you can see in here, we're gonna try and maintain a, a level of water above the grain bed. So you can start to see that there's a little bit of water above the grain bed and we're going to try and maintain that level. Now take a look at these dark runnings. So I put four ounces of chocolate malt in there as well as the uh, Crystal 85 which is giving it that color. So if you can see that really nice clear runnings and this is going to be a really nice dark American ale. Okay guys, the sparge water is gone. I poured the first runnings, or the first bit of the runnings here. It's about uh, three and a half gallons already. So I've poured that back in the boil kettle and we've got it coming up to temperature, okay? So I'm just gonna continue and let this run off from the sparge or from the mash tun. Let it run off completely until it's done. And then chances are I'll have about five and a half to six gallons of pre-boil wort, okay? So it's in there, we're getting things running. We'll see you in a minute. We have almost six gallons of wort in here. It has just come up to a boil and I did my first hop addition. So I have a strainer bag or a paint strainer bag here. I put a half ounce of Simcoe hops in there for my bittering hops. Next hop addition is at 30 minutes. So I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. Okay guys, here we go with the next top edition. This is one ounce of Cascade at 30 minutes. So 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. So when I come back, I can add my wart chiller. There we go. Okay guys, we're five seconds left. So that means we're at the 15 minute mark. So at 15 minutes, we put our wart chiller in there. So there we go, wart chiller going in. So I think we all know the reason behind putting the wart chiller in at 15 minutes. If you don't, look it up somewhere. I'm kidding. It's so that we can sanitize the wart chiller so that there's nothing on there. Because once the boil is done, we want everything sanitary. So we're going to set this timer for 5 minutes. At 10 minutes, I'm adding my uh, Waroflock or Irish Moss, and I'm also adding yeast nutrient. Need to get to the other side. There it is guys, so five more minutes, we're going to kill this boil and we're going to war chill. Okay, see you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, we got ten seconds left. So five minutes left in the boil and we're going to add our last hop addition. I'm adding one ounce of sterling hops. Here we go, five minutes. Okay guys, time's up. Sorry for the lighting if it really sucks right now. Uh, but we're going to kill the boil and we're going to crank on the wart chiller here. So our hot bag I'm just going to leave in there for now while I start the wart chill but in a minute or two I'm going to yank that out of there. So here we go. So guys believe it or not I try to be economical and what I do is while the wart chiller is running because I don't have my washer and dryer down here I would run this water into my wash machine but it's not down here so what I end up doing is I end up washing all of my dishes and rinsing off all the stuff I need to clean up that's in my sink while the wart chiller is running. So I'm not wasting the water, you know? Home brewers gotta be frugal, man. All the spent grain and the leftover grain I dumped in my garden, and then this is the leftovers. Just gonna clean this up now. So here we go, we're going to yank the hot bag out of here now. Let it drain out because I don't want to lose any of those alpha acids. And... So we're going to work chill down to about 75 degrees. Um, by the time you're done wart chilling, if you use the water to wash all the dishes and clean up, guys, you should have nothing left to clean except for the brew pot, okay? The yeast starter is ready to go as soon as we get that wart chill. I'm going to sanitize my fermentation vessel right now, okay? Okay, hey guys, so I just finished sanitizing the fermentation vessel. Just taking out the star sand now. I don't really care if there's some bubbles in there. It's not going to hurt anything. So we'll just leave that like that. I sanitized a colander, a really nice strainer. You don't really have to do this, but it's a secondary measure just to take out any uh, solids that might be in the wart. Okay, so what I do is I put my lid on like this. I sanitized a hose. And it's got a quick disconnect on it. All I'm going to do real quickly is just spray some star sand in the end of the adapter there. Now really, that's sanitized because it was really, really hot. It was 100, and 100 degrees Celsius for an hour. So chances are it's sanitized, but I like to be extra sure and make sure. So here we go, we're going to connect our hose. I stick this through the airlock hole into the colander and then cover the hole up with a paper towel and open up our valve. And there goes our brew. So 
So guys, the wart is down to about 75 degrees, which is perfect wart, or, uh, yeast pitching temperature. My yeast starter is exploding a little bit here. I'm just trying to suspend all the yeast before we pitch it. But uh, as you can see, that yeast is highly active right now, so it's kind of doing a volcano on me. It's okay, that means it's good yeast. What we're drinking here, guys, is the Anglo-American wheat beer. Good stuff. Look at that lacing. I think we're going to end up with about five and a half gallons of wort, which is perfect. I actually set up a recipe in Beersmith and it was for a five and a half gallon batch. So by the time we bottle it, it'll be just over five gallons. Okay, so five gallons of bottled beer works out to be um, roughly just shy of three cases of beer. So let's say this cost me in materials, 30 bucks, in time, eight hours or six hours, and really nothing else. So in total, maybe maximum $40, and you get just about three cases of beer. So, can't go wrong, guys. Here it is, we're just about through this. Just as you know, any solids left, we don't want that in our in our wart. So I captured all that. So what do we end up with? Just shy of 23 liters, so that's exactly five gallons. By the time I add the yeast starter, we'll end up with just shy of five gallons of, of beer when it's all done. So I'm going to pitch the yeast. Uh, we'll do a gravity test here, and we'll continue on. Hey guys, here we go. We're going to do a gravity test. See how this turned out. We got. Just shy of 23 liters. By the time it ends up, it'll be 23 liters with the liter and a half of yeast starter there. So I'm happy with that. Take a sample here. That's got a really nice color. And it's going to be strong, guys. Get that up here. Wait for some bubbles to subside. Ten seventy. So ten seventy. We're looking at nine and a half percent, guys. That's going to be a wicked strong beer. This is party beer, no session beer. Definitely not something you give your mom and your papa when they're here. Cheers, guys. It's all done. I'm going to put the airlock on there. I might put a blow-off tube on it, depending, but uh, throw it in the fermentation room, and we're all set. Thanks. Okay, guys, there we go. The brew is done. Awesome all-grain batch happened right there. Um, my first time ever doing, I guess I'm going to call it Frick's Shepherd's Pie, because it was a batch where we just threw everything together that I had left over and uh, used it all up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a great night brewing. See you guys soon. What I got here is the all grain honey brown. Look at that. Fantastic. I hope you guys got something from this video. Um, I had fun filming it. 
And like I said before, I'm going to do the quick excerpts of the various stages so that if there's something you, need, you want to focus on specifically, whether it be sparging, mashing in, war chilling, boiling and hop additions, whatever it may be, I'm going to focus on those little, uh, I'm going to focus on those specific areas. Okay, so thanks again for watching. See you guys soon. Cheers. Drink good beer, guys. Yeah.